Welcome to Under the Magnifier, where two legally blind people discuss our favorite books, shows, and movies. This is episode two, and I am going to be introducing Dark Odin and our viewers to Mo Dao Zushi, or Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. There will be spoilers for the books, The Donghua named Mo Dao Zushi, and the live action drama titled The Untamed. Hope you enjoy. Episode two, Under the Magnifier, because now we have a name. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We yeah. did it! It only took till episode two. I saw so many Sorry. with like oh, outer rim. Clever. Yeah, right? Like, I saw so many with like outer rim and edge of the galaxy, and I'm like, okay. I, I had a feeling edge of the galaxy might have been taken after I said it, because uh, it's also like the Disney theme park deal. Well, like, <laughs> I. I'm probably gonna take that. Yeah, I looked at the, the podcast and I'm like, wow, there's so many. Like, I guess they're also just book reviews or something. Yeah, some of them are book reviews. I had one that I listened to. It was a podcast, and he he just reviews the uh, TV series when they come out, like Obi Wan. Oh, I listened okay. to his review a couple of those. So I have I to do that one time when they start getting those out. But I think they, there's a good little. I think Mandalorian might be. Oh no, Endor actually is coming out here soon. Oh yeah, I mean we don't have to just do August. books, so we can always talk about yeah. the, uh, the TV shows too. Because actually, I'm going to mention TV shows with this one because I get to. It's my book today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll probably go back and forth because we both have very different, but also I, I read a wide variety of books and clearly the Star Wars books have a wide variety of genres. So we both kind of just read whatever we like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the book I've been reading is Mo Dao Zushi uh, by MXTX. I'm not going to butcher her name. I'm sure I already butchered the name of the book, but yeah. the English translation is called The Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. And, like, we'll probably do spoilers Ooh. later, but I'll do, like, a super quick summary. <laughs> so, basically, uh, the main character, uh, it starts the book off, but he is dead. So, <laughs> oh. he comes back to life, like, unwillingly, too. Like, he is brought back to life against his will, and he's not happy about it, either. <laughs> and it's actually, like, obviously, it is a, this is an LGBTQ plus book. It is boys love, which means they're two dudes that like get together in it. But it's not just romance. The actual main genre is murder mystery. Okay. <laughs> because he's brought back to find the pieces of a body that's been cut up. And along with the body, the soul was torn apart. So like he is the father of basically necromancy. Like he established it and he knows the most about it. So that's why they brought him back to life. Yeah, I was going to say, this is kind of a strange murder mystery, but instead of us starting off with someone got murdered, we're starting off with someone comes back to life. <laughs> right? Like, it's weird. <laughs> and, like, one of the genre, like, this it book... Sounds very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm already just I'm waiting to hear it. <laughs> it's actually pretty interesting. Um, The book actually started as a web novel. The woman wrote it online and posted it, but it was in Chinese, so it took a long time for us to get an actual English translation. Like, the original, like, fan translations were pretty bad. Some of the names were translated, so it's like, oh. what is this weird combination of was, words? <laughs> like, what? This is quite a bit lost the translation. <laughs> yeah, and it was really nice that people did fan translate it, because it got it a lot of hype, and that's why we have it. And I mentioned oh. the TV series, because this book also has a Chinese drama called The Untamed, and that's pretty cool. Mm. And then it has a Donghua, which is actually just anime, basically, but it's like the Chinese version, and okay. it is pretty cool. It has like three seasons. It's finished. Both of those are actually finished. Uh, but because of Chinese censorship, the book is gay, but both of those shows are not. There's just a lot of, like, eye-fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, mm. like, why are these two just <laughs> staring at each other so longingly, and the camera's <laughs> painting around them like it's a romantic shot? Like, yeah. What's happening right now? <laughs> I'm pretty sure anyone straight would watch that show and be like, those guys have to be gay for each other, right? Like, something's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we can get into, like, spoilers. So there are, like, it was split up into three books. I think the English translation was actually split up into five, I guess, because it's a very long series. A lot of shit happens. So the main character, they have three names, dude. It's so fun. Oh, you know that from Dynasty Wars, yeah. too. Like, yeah. they have their formal name, their birth name, and then they have, like, a title. Okay. Like, huh. Wan Yu, I think you said he's, like, known as the God of War. Yeah. Yeah, and he has a title and then a family name and all. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like, the main character's name is Wei Wushen. That's his formal name. His birth name is Wei Ying. His title is the Yiling Patriarch. So, like, I'm just gonna call him Wei Wushen because it's easier. 
Because <laughs> the book does okay. switch between. And it's kind of neat, like, the nuances, because at some point, peoples will call him, they'll call him Wei Ying, and he's like, I don't know you, that's an insult. Like, because you're calling me by my birth uh, name, you no. don't have permission. Yeah. So it's like they're insulting him. And, like, there's a lot of points in the book where they'll be like, you got to give me some face. Like, I'm losing face. And it basically just means, like, they're disrespecting you. You're losing credibility. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's not like a high fantasy, so it's regular fantasy, and they have, like, cultivation. Which, honestly, is just easier to be like, it's magic. They have magic. <laughs> they have, they develop oh, golden cores. Or necromancy and all. Yeah. Yeah, they have, like, you know, necromancy is the bad magic, but their regular cultivation magic is just, like, they meditate and they'll develop these golden cores that'll power, like, their talismans, and they ride their, their swords like skateboards, but they can fly, <laughs> so... I wonder if they're literally surfing their swords above some water, and I'm like, this is... I don't know if this is jumping really sharp, but it's really crazy. <laughs> So there's kind of a, like a yin-yang kind of a magic to this. You have like a dark yes. side and a light side. Yes. So like the corpses have like, to bring corpses back to life, they're powered by resentful energy. Like not everybody becomes a cor like a, they call them fierce corpses. It's zombies. So I looked this up after recording because I wanted to confirm exactly what the corpses were and why they aren't referred to as zombies. The corpses are similar to zombies, but there are two different types. The basic ones are called walking corpses. They are slow and easy to defeat. The ones that we see in the village are fierce corpses. These are stronger, faster, and more dangerous. Interestingly, the female ones are especially vicious, which kind of tracks. Anyway, back to the podcast. Because, <laughs> like, that's what I was saying, like, the, um, the Jingxi, the one in the Ghost Watchers that we played, yeah. I think that ghost is loosely based on the Chinese ghost, because in, like, the Fierce Corpses, when you're revived, you have rigor mortis, obviously, like, when you die, you have rigor mortis. So the zombies yeah. can't bend any of their joints, huh. so all of the Chinese houses have high thresholds, and that's just so the right. zombies can't get in, because they hop to move. <laughs> and, like, that's just, like, a literal <laughs> cultural thing. <laughs> I was like, that's so crazy Good. and interesting. Oh, it's so funny. Really, I, I never would have guessed that. It's, it's funny because, like, the guy demonstrates it. He's like, watch. And he, like, holds his arms down and, like, hops and can't get out the door. And they're like, what the hell? And he, they can't get out. So, like, they'll fall over and then the sun will kill them or somebody will just come along and go, oh, look, there's a corpse on the ground and kill it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, we solved the problem just by making that step higher. And it's, like, it's so ingenious in its simplicity. Just find a way to topple them over. Right? like um so the book begins by just like the book the show all of them begin saying like yay the yiwing patriarch is dead like they're celebrating his death and then it jumps 15 years later and a boy called mo sheng yu complicated name and like he sacrifices his body to bring wei Rushen back so he basically is like take my soul shred it mm. and put him in my body so now wei Rushen, who would be like 30 at this point is in like a, the body of like a 17 year old okay so when he's reincarnated he's reincarnated in someone else's body yeah okay. and it's the kind of thing where like it's a curse because the guy brings him back on the stipulation that he gets revenge from his family who have been like beating him up they, his mom ended up killing herself out of shame oh so he was alone in this prominent family in this village and they were shaming him to death so he's like i'm gonna kill myself and uh the mysterious person that you like find out about encouraged him to do this so there's like a puppet master in the book that you don't really find out to the end the twist is like super difficult to figure out oh, okay so there's a little shadow guy in here oh yeah there's some yeah. Behind the scenes, pulling the, the strings. Book, it's crazy because the book's so well written. Because like when I first got into it, I was like, "Oh, it's a gay romance. Cool, I'll read this." That's up my alley because you don't see that very often. You see yeah. More now, but I'm like, "Oh, I actually got a good book too." <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised that this is actually a good read. But um, so he's revived in this village, and then uh, there are different clans. Just like in Dynasty Wars, there are three clans. In this, there are there are three because he died and he had his own clan. And they were all murdered. But there are four clans. There are the Jiang sect, which is the purple people. They adopted Wei Bishen in his previous life, so that's technically the sect he was a part of before he died. Uh, there's a land clan, which are the white people. That's where his love interest is. And then there's, like, the yellow people, which is the Jin sect, which are, like, the rich hoity-toity people who are, like, super snobby. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Ni sect, which is a clan of butchers. Uh, and they're called that because instead of using, like, regular long swords or sabers, and it's weird because the translation is so hard with, like,
like the weapons. They call it a saber, but it's basically like a sword that's like four foot long, but it looks like a cleaver. Yeah, like I it's not the what thin... you're talking about from, yeah, like, from not... like Dynasty Warriors. Right? Like when I picture saber, I think of like a thin, like maybe curved blade or something. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah you think picture... of something that's more pirate like or something. <laughs> yeah. Whereas they are just known for like their very big cleavers and they're just like murderous. <laughs> but um, so he's brought back in this village and the land clan shows up because it just so happens there's some crap going down here and these zombies are showing up and they only show up when there's a lot of resentful energy so they don't know what's going on and he's cursed his soul will be destroyed if he doesn't fulfill what the guy who gave him the body wants him to do so he has to basically like he wanted him to kill the family and he's like oh great i'm not a murderer like technically yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> like, i mean i brought back well, corpses and they killed people so i mean i'm kind of like once removed from the death yeah so it ends up him being there this uh arm shows up just like an evil arm that just kills everyone by like it finds a person rips off their arm attaches itself to them and ends up killing them because of that whoa <laughs> so it just kills like that entire yeah. family like he's now the only surviving person of the mo clan and he's not even him anymore so the arm's not a part of him or a part of the, the person he uh, became a part of no it's just like a mysterious arm yeah it's just a mysterious arm that just randomly shows up and they're like completely flabbergasted by it before the arm kills people when it shows up they have the land clan comes to help out because they're basically just they're the good guy cultivators like if you call them they show up for no money and they just exercise spirits and stuff so they oh, show okay. up with a bunch of juniors who are like kids around his age but he's 30 in a 17 year old body so he's like the same age as them but he's like you kiddos and they're like we're not you're not much older than us <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's funny because the guy he uh the body he has i forgot to mention it uh everyone called him a lunatic so he's like oh so i have an excuse to act like a lunatic <laughs> so he just yeah. runs around like paint smeared on his face acting crazy because that's just in his character it's cool so it's like just... a much older guy in a young person's body <laughs> mm-hmm Oh, it's great because the love interest didn't die. So this is a love story between a like 17, 18 year old and a 30 year old. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was, I was thinking. I was like, okay. <laughs> but they don't look that old. But like the arm is clearly like, too much for these kids to handle. It kills everybody. They like manage to survive, but like they end up calling for help. And Lan Chan shows up. So that's his love interest, Lan Chan, Lan Wanji, or Hung Gun Jun. None of the names are easy for him. <laughs> so I'm just going to call him. I don't remember one of them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I'll call him Lan Chan. Chan is spelled with a Z-H, so I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right. <laughs> Yeah, probably a different sound for it. Right, like that's the sound I here. From German. Oh. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. It's yeah. too much trouble. I, I was I was calling him Zan for so long, but then like I listened to the show and in the Chinese version they say Chan, but I'm probably not pronouncing the right sound. It's probably like a slightly different sound, but that's like the closest like American sound. Yeah. So y'all don't complain me. Can... I'm just not Chinese and will not pretend to be. <laughs> I'm just American. <laughs> poor American who barely speaks English. Yeah. Oh, we're poor Amer we're American and Southern, okay? Okay, come on. We're American and Southern. We don't even speak good English. <laughs> So, so Lanjan just totally shows up and saves the day. And like, there's a lot of musical instruments. He plays the Gujin, which is basically like, imagine a guitar, but it's flat and you play it in your lap. It has six strings. Okay, yeah. I kind of remember it from uh, seeing some uh, Kung Fu movies and stuff. Yeah, it's like a classical Chinese instrument, but because he's a cultivator, like the Lansac uses music to like fight evil. So they basically just imbue like the sound with magic. And like Wei Mishin oh. actually uses a flute to control the zombies. So, and I love it because at this point in the story, the arm attaches itself to a statue and just starts going berserk and nobody can stop it and like their savior's on his way but he's not there yet so like we're gonna die and then Weibushin from his past life his brother who is now the head of the, the purple people sect <laughs> and his nephew who is actually like next in line for the yellow people the gens uh, he shows up too and Weibushin doesn't know it's his nephew so he like completely insults him and I was like oh great now my nephew hates me and I'm not even me so <laughs> I'm fucking up both lives man <laughs> <laughs> like his brother is now apparently he's got like a glow up he's like so cool and hot and purple but he's like so jaded and angry <laughs> like he's just known as the angry guy like everyone's kind of afraid of him like his favorite saying is if you don't listen to me i'm gonna break your legs like better go find that uh yeah, keep the distance. Go, like, go find that zombie you better not come back or i'll break your legs <laughs> like, okay 
<laughs> but, like, the statue is going to kill his nephew, who is Jin Ling, so he, like, fashions a flute out of bamboo, and it's it's great because it sounds awful. In the book, in the Dongo and everything, they're like, yeah, it sounds awful. We made it sound awful because who the hell can make a flute in, like, five seconds? Yeah. <laughs> like, in the book, I love it because he's playing it, and the other people are like, please stop. P please stop. And he's like, I'm glad it makes noise, dude. <laughs> but he's trying One to... One of the, the the arm attached itself to the statue, so the statue yeah. is now animated. It, it can Yeah, it, like, move around. The statue back to life and they're trying to fight it but it's like mm. between the different versions in some versions like in the uh in the live action one the statue is a soul-sucking monster Ooh. in the book the arm and the statue are two separate things the statue is a soul sucker but it's decided it just wants to eat people now and the arm has oh. agitated it and i think <laughs> they're kind of spaced out more in the book so it's a little weird like uh because it's nice because actually if you want to go to different medias like if you want to watch the anime or you want to watch the live action or you want to read the book like if you even if you do all of them the stories are slightly different obviously they all hit the same ending point but yeah. they change up the story beats just enough so that it's interesting yeah it's not bad shoot. i mean it might not connect with the other stuff but shoot it's almost like some of the video games we play you get alternate endings yeah you don't want to see yeah. alternate ending see it go a different way yeah like the ultimate ending is the same but like in some of the endings for like i guess extra spoilers or something in a few of the endings uh way and his brother end on a better note like oh. they get shit out in the open and it's like, oh, they could reconcile after this. You know, well, we don't know unless she does extra chapters or something. But in the Dongwa, the anime, they change up the order of events at the end, and it ends in a way that you're like, wow, they are never going to talk to each other again. <laughs> like, oh, they hate each other. Wow. All right. Like, over. This is a downer ending, man. We're completely two different ways. Yeah. In the story, like, to save his nephew, he uses uh, the flute he made, and he calls, like, he's just like, whatever corpse is nearby, anything, please. And he ends up summoning the ghost general Wen Ning, who was in his past life before he died, he had a corpse that he brought back to life and had given its consciousness back, which has never happened before or since. They're always just shambling like zombies. Well, Wen Ning is a zombie, but he can think, so he's smart, and he can act on his own. But he accidentally summons him, and he's like, okay, wait, you're supposed to be, you died before I died. What's going on here? I'm confused. But he messes up. Obviously something's wrong with Wen Ning, and the song was, like, too aggressive, so he's like, okay, I gotta think of like a calmer song and he ends up playing a song that Lan Chan wrote for him but didn't tell him like it's revealed later that he wrote it for Wei Ying but didn't tell him about it because he was like pining and quiet never meant to tell him and it's Ooh. technically their song like the name of it is Wang Xian which is like their names together <laughs> And uh, he plays it to calm down Wen Ning. He plays Wei Xian, which no one knows except him and Lan Chan. And uh, Lan Chan's like, okay, you're Wei Yang. Like, I know you don't look like him, which in the book, they're clear. They're like, he doesn't look like his past self. He looks like the kid whose body you took over. Yeah. In the anime and the live act, the same actor and like a similar character. So it's kind of like confusing. But in the book, they're very clear that he's six inches shorter and has different eye color and is just a different body. Yeah. Because in the other ones, I'm like, how do you not recognize? Him. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> but in the book, like, yeah, he looks different. He doesn't actually look like him. So unless you know him well enough, you don't know it's him. And I'm trying to like, you are him. Like, I know now. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> who you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't say anything, because when Ning is there, everybody else is like, are you Wei Wuxin? Because no one else can control him. So, like, his stepbrother, Jin Cheng, I'll just call him JC, because it's easier, because I'm probably going to butcher his name, the leader of the purple people. He's like, yeah. I'm going to pull out my whip, because the whip is a special spiritual object. It expels evil spirits that have possessed things. Hmm. So he, like, smacks Wei Wuxin with it, and he's like, that's not cool, I'm not into that. <laughs> 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 but it doesn't work. And he's like, what? I want to say I think I've seen it. That's the uh, animated one? Yeah, that's in the anime. That's in all of them, but like in the anime one, it's great. <laughs> it's funny. I think I might have seen a commercial for that or something. I feel like I, I've seen a character say something like that. You, you hear a pop, and then he's like, um, I'm not into that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, when you said that, this just, that just clicked a little sound bite, and I was like, oh. <laughs> if it says it in English, it might not be it, because none of, only the book is translated. The anime and oh. the live action are all in Chinese, unfortunately. Maybe it was something on YouTube or something. Hmm. Maybe. Somebody might have, like, made a joke about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my favorite that, part. I'm watching most more YouTube than anything else now. Oh, yeah. For sure. ahead. He does that, and he's like, wait, okay, it didn't work. And it doesn't work because he wasn't, he didn't take the body, he was forced into the body. Yeah. Like, he can't be a Expelled. It's just his now. And Jin Cheng's like, well, I'll just take you home and torture the crap out of you because that's just mm. what he does now, apparently. And Wei Ying's like, uh, can you not? <laughs> like, <laughs> 
please? And Jalen jumps in and is like, no. So, to add even more complicated shit to it, he's related to his nephew now. Huh. Like, the body he took over, Bo Sheng Yu, was actually the brother to his cousin's dad. So he's like his uncle twice now. <laughs> It's real weird, but, like, he oh has... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but technically the body he's in has, like, the Jin bloodline. His body got kicked out of their sect for being a cut sleeve, which is Chinese for gay. Way, way, way too gay. Yeah. They're like, you are stop harassing people, you get out. I was gonna say, but then he, he winds up right back in the same same sect. Well, he winds up, like, running into him. He's technically sectless right now, because he was just kicked out. That's why he was gonna commit suicide, because he was just shamed. Jin Ling's like, he's crazy. They kicked him out of my sect. He'll just chase anything. He'll chase a cow because he's so crazy. <laughs> like, I can use this to my advantage. And he's like, you know, the cow in the village isn't my type and neither are you, JC. <laughs> His brother's like, excuse me? <laughs> he's offended. And he's, he's like, oh, I'll get two birds with one stone. I'll be like, no, but you know who is my type? Lanchan. Because he has no idea that Lanchan is super gay for him. And he's trying to gross him out. And he's like, oh. okay. <laughs> so I was like, I'll take you home then. He's like, what? <laughs> Backfire so hard on him. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> like, wait, no, no, I don't want to go to Gusu. I don't want to go to the land place. No, they have so many rules. And they do, they have rules. Like, they have a wall with rules carved into it, and there are 3,000 rules. Jeez. There's no running, no yelling. Like, there's so many things that are not allowed. <laughs> it cuts to him, like, being dragged in. He's like, no, please, anything. I'd rather die again. Please don't. <laughs> don't make me read all these rules. <laughs> Right? He's like, I don't want to live here. And that's where the uh, the book and all the other series cut back to the past because there are two stories running simultaneously right now. They don't give you, like, the backstory I'm giving as I go. They don't give you any of that. They just throw you in it and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Mm-hmm. And at this point, they'll jump to the past and they're like, okay, this is who this character actually is like, in his past life 15 years ago before he actually died. And they go through all that stuff. Like, he trained at Gusu, and he was, like, the head disciple of the Jiang Chang. The, uh, Jiang clan. It's, the names are so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he trained at the land sack for, like, six months before he got his ass kicked out because he's just too crazy. Oh, yeah. But, um, like, that's when he first ran into Lan Chan, and, like, he kept hitting on him because Wei Ying is, like, a hopeless flirt in the book. And Lan Chan is so strict and uptight that, like, he's like, I'm gonna mess with with this dude because he doesn't react and I'm going to make him react. I'm going to piss him off because I think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once you get a reaction out of him. <laughs> right? And he will do anything yeah. to get a reaction out of this man. <laughs> like at one point, he is being punished by copying their rule book, which is basically like a Bible because he's copying all of the rules, all 3,000 up like a hundred times. Mm-hmm. So they're like, he's not going to actually do that. So we're going to put Lanchan in the same room with him and he's going to watch him do it. And they're punishing both of them, I guess. Because at this yeah, point, Lanchan's yeah. like, I hate this kid. He's such so annoying. And he's actually, is he actually doing this? He's, he's he writing. Actually, he actually does. It is calligraphy. It's like the Chinese calligraphy. Oh, so I'm like, oh God. God. <laughs> so he is actually torturing the other one too. <laughs> it took him three months to do it. <laughs> oh. Locked them together and like they call it the library pavilion for three months and he's like, I'm finally done. <laughs> like, the last day he snuck in a porn book into the library oh. with him and he distracted the other guy and then swapped out the book he was reading with the porn book. <laughs> Just to fuck with him. Oh god. <laughs> he does end up like oh, he ends up just destroying the book and like screaming at him to get out. He's like, oh, You raised your voice and you said something uncouth. Oh my god. <laughs> I've chipped at the statue. <laughs> like I got a rise out of you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> But I'm oh man, it, it's great, and he's just like that little shit the whole time, and it's it's great because in the past, all the little because it jumps back and forth between the past and the present. That's something she does in all of her books because she's written a couple others, and this one it's pretty egregious yeah. too, but it's not too bad in the book. It's worse in like the show, like in, in the Untamed. I think in like episode one or two they jump back to the past, and then they're in the past for like thirty episodes, and it's a fifty episode show. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars has got some like that. Some I've seen some authors like that style like uh i think it's like a turkin one where they they do that they keep jumping back to like his childhood trying to give you his backstory while they're telling you the the main story yeah this book's pretty like, yeah. they they jump back like in the show and the uh, in both of the actual like shows dungla and the live action it's egregious they do it for a couple like they do a big chunk in the book it's less they go back and they'll talk about a couple things that happens and then come back to the present and it's pretty obvious where they make the shifts in the other shows it's not because it's the same actor and character. So you're like, 
wait, this is the past or the future? Or what's happening right now? Uh, yeah. Like, is he 15, 19, or 30? Or 19 again, because I'm yeah, confused. I'm so <laughs> confused. Oh, that's probably similar to, like, uh, me and Bobby used to watch this, uh, they had a TV series that was kind of like that, and the guy shifted between a really young age, a middle age, and then old. But they did it, oh, yeah. it so randomly. Oh, that like out of just, sequence? Yeah, out of sequence and everything, and you didn't know which one it was going to be next, and it, it was so confusing. And after a while, we were just like, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah, I watched a movie called The Time Traveler's Wife with Mom one time, and it was like that, because he goes like into the future and the past, but like sometimes he goes into his own future and his own past. Like He meets his daughter way before she was born, and it's... Like, that one was kind of confusing to watch. Like, you really had to pay attention. Yeah, yeah, that when you're, you're going that far. Oof. Yeah, and we're, like, three chapters in, so I'm going to, like, super summarize the rest of this. I'm going to be vague, because if you want to read it, that'd be cool, but you don't have to. Like, I don't know if the romance would be your cup of tea, but, like, uh, they continue on, and they're just, like, trying to find these body parts. So they find the arm, and they go searching, and the whole time they're going from place to place, like, they stay in inns and stuff. And it's just the two of them, because Long Tan does not trust Wei Wuxian to just not run the fuck off and disappear again. He's like, you are Satan here. I am not going through this again. <laughs> like, <laughs> get my eyes on you, bitch. But Wei yeah. Wuxian is just like, he keeps trying to uh, disgust him, which is his own words. So he'll like, crawl into bed with him, or climb into the bathtub with yeah. him. <laughs> Like, hang off him and insinuate things. <laughs> I'm like, you are literally asking it for it. This gay man has so much resolve. Oh, God. That's too good. I'm gonna have to watch some of these. Oh, yeah. It's great because, like, they go around and collect the body parts. Hijinks ensue, obviously. Like, this crazy shit's happening. They're starting to suspect that the leader of the Jin sect, which is Jin Ling's other uncle, is a very bad guy and is, like, this might be his doing, like, this cut-up body. And they find the leg and the Ni Clan's saber tomb. Because apparently their butchery, like, using their swords is, like, it's such a crazy thing that all of their leaders have died from key deviation. Which is basically, like, their core Horrors get thrown off because they're so brutal that they implode from the inside. Oh. Like when key deviation actually gets to the breaking point, they bleed from all of their orifices and they just die. <laughs> and the swords, all of the swords that like they fly on are spiritual swords, which means they have like a name and they have like a personality kinda. <laughs> it's almost like a soul imbued in them. Sorta. Of. Like it's not actually a soul. Like they make that kind of clear. It's not like they're putting people's souls into it. It's just oh. had so much spiritual energy pumped into it into and it's forging that it is a very special sword and it deserves respect. Oh. Um, but the Ni Clan sabers are used so violently and have such a bloodlust that they have to be buried in a tomb with corpses. So cool. the saber spirits have something to fight or they'll go out and like cause havoc. Like <sighs> the, if they don't have something to fight, even if their owners are dead, they'll find something to fight or they'll make something to fight. Jeez. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they so find the leg. Very dangerous swords. <laughs> very. And you can't destroy them. Ooh. They can't be destroyed they can't be melted down it wouldn't get rid of the resentful energy Jeez. so they find the leg in that tomb and then they move on and they end up finding the uh like there's a couple things that happen there but i'm i'm gonna kind of gloss over it uh they end up moving into the city arc which is like the most fucked up arc and that's where they find the torso. In that arc, they run into who they think is Zhao Zichen. Uh, he's supposed to be a wandering cultivator. He doesn't have a sect. He just goes around saving people. And okay. he is blind. He's a blind cultivator. Hmm. His cultivation is so high that he can just fight without having being able to see. And they go into the past. Apparently, he had like a sworn brother from like another minor sect. Like not one of the big sects, but like a little one. And Yu Yang, who was like this thug, ended up blinding his like sworn brother. And he blamed himself. So he plucked out his eyes and gave them to the other guy. To his brother? Yeah, gave oh. his eyes to his, like, sworn brother. Because he lost them thanks to this, like, Yu Yang, who was, like, just the worst kid. I wanted to like him because he's, like, he's crazy and, like, a fun way, sort of? Like, at first you're like, oh, he's just kind of, like, mischievous. But no, he's just, like, straight up <laughs> evil. Like, he well, blinds this dude. Us, but no, much worse. <laughs> Yeah, because you find out, like, he blinds this dude, and he kills this dude's entire sect, and then when they go to Yi City, you find out that he killed the entire cultivation sect in Yi City, and then, because, uh, he did a bunch of shit, he got caught and almost died. They left him, like, on the side of the road to die. Zhao Zhichen found him, but he's blind, so he didn't know it was him. So he nursed him back to health, and then this guy, knowing that this man hates him because, like, he's done such fucked up shit to him and his sworn brother, he stays with him and pretends he's someone else for five years. 
like, and then near the end, his uh, sworn brother, sh- like, and while that's happening, like, oh, maybe Yu Yang is, like, changing his leaf, you know, maybe he's, like, being close to this, like, guy that's so good that maybe he's starting to, like, become a better person or something. Oh. But no, no, because then the sworn brother shows up <laughs> looking, oh, yeah, like, the sworn brother shows up looking for him after, like, years because he wants to apologize and, like, thank him for the eyes and, like, try to reconcile things and discovers because he can see that that's Yu Yang and that's not cool. And so they fight, and Yu Yang cuts out his tongue and throws corpse powder on him, which makes him have, like, the spiritual energy of a corpse. So Zhao Zichen kills him. He kills his sworn brother on accident because Yu Yang makes him seem like a corpse. Oh. Yeah, and then, like, like they just, like, continue on for a couple days. But, like, they had a little girl that was hanging out with him who was born with, like, white eyes. Like, she's pretending to be blind, but she's not. Her eyes are just white, naturally. Yeah. She saw that shit go down. So when she finally has a chance to tell the blind guy, like, by himself, she tells him what happened. And he's like, oh, shit, really? Like, he doesn't believe it at first. But then he confronts the other guy and he's like, yeah, that's what happened. And he reveals it to him because the other guy, the other guy is now a fierce corpse under his control because Yu Yang is apparently a necromancer, too. Ooh. And, like, he shows him the guy. And he's like, he is in such despair that he killed his best friend that he ends up killing himself. And Yu Yang is so mad that he killed himself. So he can't, like, resurrect him because his spirit is shattered because he was so distraught when he died. Because he wanted to bring him back because he's creepy like that. He just murders the entire village. (laughs) Jeez. And that's that's where they show up. And he's just running around pretending to be the guy he tortured into killing himself. Jeez. (laughs) <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. Um, <laughs> we wish it had I ended up putting him down. And, like, good riddance, but also, like, oh, man. Like, he started out as someone you kind of wanted to root for, and then you're just like, oh, I'm so glad he's dead. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, good riddance to you, buddy. <laughs> like, you kind of deserve that, though. Like... <laughs> But it's messed up because, like, all the, like, even in the book, but, like, the facial expressions and all the other stuff, it's like he kind of, like, fell for Zichin, but he was, like, the mind of a child. All he knows how to do is lash out when he's hurt. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, but people who oh. lash out as children don't usually end in murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't usually go that far. Yeah, right? So, like, they deal with that. They leave there. They travel for a bit more. Like, they've picked up all of these juniors that like to follow them around now. His nephew and, like, two other kids that are in the land clan, and then another kid from, like, another random sect, and they just, like, keep running into them randomly. (laughs) Which is great, because he's like, y'all are children, and they're like, you are the same age as us. And he's like, you're right, you're right, but, like, yeah. but just I'm don't talk like y'all or act like y'all. <laughs> right? <laughs> and knows way too much, because he keeps doing things, and they're like, huh, you know a lot about demonic cultivation. He's like, I just know one or two things. And like, no, you know a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you are so, like, he is so sus. <laughs> Like, it's oh. kind of shocking that they don't figure it out right away. And I think some of them are, like, not super surprised when it's revealed who he is. Oh, I just about figured it out by that time. Yeah, really. But they keep wandering around. I forget where they, like, it's really weird because at that point, I think they find the body, like, the torso and the arm around the same time. But in different shows, it's different places where they find those two. So it's a little confusing, like, in my brain. <laughs> No. But um, they end up like they have the. It's kind of neat. So uh, you know D and D. You know about the um. Oh shit! What's it called? The the bag. Oh god, the bag that has no bottom. Like it's huge in the inside. What is it called? Yeah. They have basically the same thing called a quaken pouch, and they have quaken sleeves that are basically just like bottomless, and they have these little pouches that are like you can hold one in your hand, but it has an entire torso in it. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So they're magical, so all the pieces of the body are separated, and, like, every night they have to play, like, a calming song to, like, chill it the fuck out, or the body parts are gonna try to, like, run rampant. Mm -hmm. And they end up accidentally... Yeah, they have to play it to sleep, or it gets cranky. (laughs) (laughs) And and one night, they forget, and it shreds the pouches and assembles itself into the body, but no head, because they haven't found the head yet. And when it does that, they're, like, in the woods, (laughs) and (laughs) it's just Wei Wuxian and the juniors. And Wei Wuxian, his new body doesn't really have a golden core like it's very weak so he can't use spiritual power he can use like the necromancy stuff because it doesn't use spiritual power it uses like the resentful energy yeah he's like but i'm weak 
This guy did not train as much as my old body, so I can't fight this thing. And these are children. They can't fight this thing. So <laughs> he's just like, just keep moving. Don't run. Walk slowly. It has no head. It can't see you. <laughs> it's it's like really the funniest quiet? scene, though, because it's just like him and the kids just walking around. And anytime the body like gets kind of close to one of the kids, he'll throw a rock at it or something, call attention to him. <laughs> it's the world. And like, they're like, what do we do? We can't do this all night. And he's like, good idea. And he just starts screaming for lunch. <laughs> they're like, wait, what? He's like, you can't hear me? And they just all start screaming for this guy to come save them. <laughs> oh, so no, but I'm gonna hear just screaming for help as this headless zombie just wanders after them. That's too good. Yeah, there's like, and there are like scenes like when the guy kills himself and everything, all this shit is like described in detail. So there are like parts where it's like, oh, that's a bit gory. And oh, this is hilarious. Yeah. So, like, it's it's great. Like, I'll, I'll have to, like, show you the first book so you can read it. But yeah. they... Yeah, like, they end up, like, getting out of that crazy situation. And at this point, Wibushin has given up, like, pretending that he's not him to launch on. He's like, yeah, I'm me. How did you know? And it's great because he's trying to trick him into telling him how he knows. Like, they'll be talking, and he's like, I know. And he'll fire a bunch of questions at him. And, like, in the line of, like, their investigation, he's like, how did you know it was me? And he's like, figure it out for yourself. And he's like, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you just <Yeah>. trick him? <laughs> <Can you help? laughs> it, it's really good. They ended up, like, they suspect the head is at the Gen Clan, so they go there and they'll infiltrate, and, like, a bunch of shit goes down. And now that I've got you interested, I don't know if I want to reveal, like, the twist. Do you want me to tell you what the twist is? Uh, yeah, you might as well, because I'll, I'll probably forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got so much, i got to read another Star Wars book and all. I'll probably forget by the time I get to it. <laughs> So it, it turns out the the dude they suspected is the murderer. Like, he did kill this guy and, like, cut him up. And it turns out the guy he killed was his sworn brother who was the head of the Knee Clan. Oh. Uh, he chopped him up, chopped up his soul, hid the body parts and everything, and he has the head. And they find that out because Wei Wushan possesses a paper doll and, like, sneaks into his treasure room to find it. And, like, on his way in, he finds, like, the wife and that guy, like, having a fight. Um, <laughs> the dude's name is Jen Guanyao. It's, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, it's so hard to pronounce, like, looking at it, I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna call you that, I'm gonna call you the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was bad guy from the beginning, because I could not remember his name. I think it's, like, his private name, his birth name is Ming Yao, so I guess I could call him Ming Yao. But, um, him and his wife are having a fight. Uh, he sneaks into the treasure room, finds the head, like, escapes, but on his way out, Ming Yao sees him. Like, he sees the paper doll, he knows shit's going down. He's smart. He knows he's about to get revealed. Wei Ying goes back to his body, they wake up, and they just kind of charge the dude's bedroom to try to reveal the head, because they're like, we don't have time. Like, this dude's smart, he's gonna hide it. And he does manage to hide it, but he tricks Wei Wuxian into revealing who he is. Because when they run in there, the head's gone. It's replaced with, like, a sword. And then, like, his wife kills herself. Oh. And, like, it's never revealed why. Like, why she did this. It's either because of, like, whatever it was having because of the fight. Like, she got a note and it said some messed up shit. Oh. So it's not sure if, like, she did it because of that or, like, the husband tricked her into doing it. But she ends up killing herself. Mm -hmm. And then he, Ming Yao, is like, you did this. Mo Zheng Yu, which is like his body's name, he's like, why would you do this? I know I kicked you out, but still, that's not right. And he like goes to attack Wei Wuxin. Wei Wuxin's like, ah, shit, all I have is this bamboo flute, and I don't have it on me, so I'm just gonna grab a shit off the shelf. And he grabs his sword from his old body and pulls it out, not knowing the sword is sealed, and only he can unsheathe it. <sighs> so he was basically just was like, I'm Wei Wuxin. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's Wei Wuxin! <laughs> and shit goes down like him and Lanchan are just getting attacked they like run outside and Jin Ling which is his nephew comes running up and is like you're Wei Wuxian you're the reason my parents are dead because he kind of is because he fucked up he ends up like when Ning kills that kid's dad and his sister who is the kid's mom she ends up dying protecting him uh -huh. so he blames himself for this kid's parents death so he's like I can't I can't say it's not my fault your parents are dead like more complicated than that but kinda and the kid's like are you Wei Ying like you have to tell me the truth and he's just like later and he tries to like walk away and the kid just straight up stabs him mm. and he's like oh shit there ain't no well, later this is happening yeah <laughs> because he's like oh you stabbed me in the same place your uncle did because yeah <laughs> with him and his sword brother well not his sword his adopted brother had a fight he also got stabbed so Wei Ying mm. just likes to get stabbed <laughs> <laughs> 
but it puts him down for like at this point there's like a couple weeks he's out for i think in the book it says he's down for like i could be wrong i think it's like 10 days or something because he doesn't have that golden core so he can't heal like the rest of them do because the kid stabbed him and he's like this stab wound on like a high level cultivator you'd be down for maybe like a day because you can heal like they yeah. make references to there's a thing called <sighs> probably gonna miss say it but it's like inertia or something like that and what it does is they practice that and they can literally go without food and water for like weeks month their golden oh. core sustains them hmm. so that's cool so that's almost, almost something like the on a i don't know if they if they do that now on the new cane in the star wars but on the older ones some of the jedi would do that they would use the force to sustain them in their x-wings to last for days at a time without food or water yeah, That's like in this, cool. like, yeah. like they don't say it in the book. I just know this because I looked into like the deep stuff. But like the end goal of cultivation is to become immortal, which is a thing that can happen. Hmm. And like this book is fantasy, but one of her other books is technically high fantasy because it's about a god and a demon. And technically, if you cultivate well enough, you can just become a god. Huh. Like that shit just happens, and you are technically just forever. <laughs> so immortal. Like, there yeah, so, like, these guys, like, that's also the reason why, like, the 30-year-old doesn't look like he's in his 30s, because, like, you don't age if your cultivation is high enough. Oh. oh. Just stay young forever. Yeah, right? So. <laughs> you made it. Yeah, and at this well. point, like, they're back at the Land Clan. Like, he got stabbed. Lanchan brought him home. And Lanchan has, like, a older brother who is basically, like, a twin to him. They look really similar. They call them the Twin Jades. Because they're both like very, they're dressed in white and they're very strict. The brother finds out, and there are three sworn, like the big sworn brothers are like the Jin, which is the bad guy, the Ni Mingju, who is the dude that was killed and cut apart, and then the third brother is Lan Chan's older brother. Oh. So his older brother, Zi Chen, does not want to believe that Ming Yao did this, so he's like, this can't be right. But Wei Wu Shen did empathy, which lets him, like, see the memories of dead people, and he did it with the head, so he knows, like, Ming Yao played him a song before he key deviated, and it sounded weird. And he plays it back, and he's like, well, that's clarity, but, like, part of it's wrong, and it turns out that there are just songs that can kill you. Oh. That the land clan has in like a secret library that no one's supposed to get into but apparently because this guy's like sworn brother or something he managed to get in there and get it oh. and they search for like a day and they find a book that's just missing a page and they're like yeah this is the thing that's missing so they suspect it's him and they all end up separating because they need to find the head and then like their roomies that corpses are popping up everywhere so it must be wei wushen but wei wushen was like in a basically a healing coma so it obviously wasn't him but all these corpses are going to the burial mounds, which is where Wei Wuxian ended up like doing his last stand and dying in his past life. Hmm. So Wei Wuxian and Lan Chan go there, and his brother goes to confront the other guy. And like this is like the like climax of the books because they go there and like the juniors are all tied up and they have to save them. But like when they're leaving, uh, they run into just all the other main sex are there to save the juniors that they think Wei Wuxian captured. And it don't look really good because he's there with the juniors now. Or no one's going to believe his word. Lantan stands up for him, and they just end up like getting in a fight, and then more corpses show up. So they all just run inside, and they put up a barrier. They end up like sussing out that one of the minor sects, the main dude of that sect, is actually in cahoots with Ming Yao. His name is Su Si, and he's just real jealous of Lantan. Like he's trying to copy him. He wears like he uses the same instrument. <laughs> and he pretends to be him. Like he copies his sword techniques and everything. He actually got kicked out of the land clan. And like he gets real mad when people call him a copycat. <laughs> well, man, dude, don't, don't be a copycat. <laughs> yeah, but that dude ended up like sealing everybody's chi, I guess. Like their magic, they can't use it now. Except for Wei Wuxian and Lanshan because they weren't there. But on oh. their way up to Mountain, he played a song that sealed everybody else's chi except his. So they discover that, that dude like runs off, he uh, grabs like a ha he grabs knee, the, the recent knee, they call him the head shaker, who's saying they grab, he grabs him as like a hostage and then flies off and they're trying to like fight back the horde and they, it's great because like they fight back the horde and it gets really bad and Wei Wuxian's like, well, I'll just like draw this talisman on me that'll attract the zombies and I'll run over here and they'll chase me and Lan Zhan will just come with me and kill them. And you guys just escape. Like, basically, he's, like, sacrificing himself so that everyone else can get away. Yeah. And he goes yeah. to do that. And then, like, there's a pool of blood in the burial mounds where he had, like, his zombies from his period of slice. He, like, would put them in there. 
to like, I don't know what he was doing. Necromancy is a weird thing, but he has like a pool of blood. And it turns out when they raided the Baramonth after they killed him, they killed everyone there and threw them in that pool. And the bodies are no more, but because he's there and he's in trouble and he had such a link with them when they were alive that they like pull themselves together and they're like blood zombies. Oh. And they come out and they just like mess up these hundreds of other zombies. And before they disappear, they like turn back the way we should, and they do like that bow. Like, you see it in like Dynasty Wars. They do like they cup their hands and bow, like a shine of oh, respect. Yeah. And then they all just disintegrate into nothing. Huh. Almost like is... little his own guardians. <laughs> yeah, kinda. But it's like super sad because it's like there's nothing left, so they're not going to reincarnate. Oh. Like they they have had the truest of deaths, so they gave up everything to protect him because he protected them and it's like so like people they're moved to tears like he is he has got tears in his eyes and he bows back and he's like thank you for everything because they just they protected him huh. but they ended up they chased soon see back to a guanyin temple it's like a god temple it's like the basic god temple that's everywhere it's like a church it's a non-denominal church, kinda. <laughs> Guanyin is like a god that has churches everywhere, but this one's in a town instead of in a mountain, which is where they usually are. Like, she's like their goddess of, like, the lost or something, I think? Okay. Not a Chinese expert, so if I'm wrong, <laughs> y'all throw it in the comments. Tell me what, what she actually is a goddess of, because that is actually super interesting to me. They go there, and then Wei Wuxin and Lan Chan have, like, a moment, and they misunderstand each other. They have, like, a fight. So Wei Wuxin runs off, and Lan Chan's still there, and he ends up just going like, I'm angry, I'm just gonna go to the temple and check it out by myself. It's fine, I'll be good, because he's dumb. <laughs> so he gets there, right? Like, you're, you're dumb! Yeah. Oh, why? Yeah, I'm like, I'm skipping over, like, other tracks that's stuff that's happening, because it's all kind of out of sequence and everything. But he goes there, and his nephew shows up, Jen Ling, because he has a spiritual dog that, like, can sense bad shit, and the dog's like, shit's going down here. And so the kid, like, just tries to climb the wall, which was just like, why are you so stupid? And they end up, like, he comes, ac oh, he climbs over the wall and just comes face to face with, like, ten archers. With, like, their bows drawn back. He's oh. like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> and they all end up, like, firing on him. And he's trying to get away. And Wei Wuxin, like, exposes his position and throws his bamboo flute. Which gets in the way of the arrows and, like, manages to, like, save the kid. But destroys his flute. So he now has, like, no weapon. Because he can't even wield a sword. Because he has no energy. And, like, of course, at that moment, Min Yao sneaks up on him and is like, ha, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> And it, like, drags him back and like, Right? Like, they cap so they capture him, and the kid ends up getting captured, too, so there's no point in it. <laughs> but, uh, this is, like, my favorite part of the book, because he's there, so he's trapped with Ming Yao and Zichen, which is the older brother of Lan Chan, and Ming Yao is apparently just a Wang Xian stand. <laughs> like, and they're, like, and they're both just, like, so... I'm paraphrasing, but they're like, you guys are, like, hooked up, right? And he's like, no, Lan Chan doesn't feel that way about me. He just feels obligated to me. And they're like, nah, fam, he loves you. <laughs> and he has, like, an existential crisis and, like, tries to run out. He's like, you're still, like, my, my captive. Have you forgot about that? You're my hostage. You can't just leave. <laughs> and the guy's like, it's f And Minya's like, it's fine. Your Lan Chan will show up anyway, because if you're in trouble, he's going to come running. Yeah. Like, how do you know that? And he's like, he's obviously going to come. And, like, the older brother just, like, yells at him, like, how dare dare you? You've been, like, teasing him and all this shit. We thought you were serious. Are you not Like, what's wrong with you? What? Put my brother on. Like, he's mad. <laughs> and so, and so Lan Chan shows up, and uh, the only reason Ming Yao has the older brother captive is because he sealed his spiritual energy, which he has to do, like, every few hours so he can't fight back. And Lan Chan shows up, and he whips out a piano wire and captures Wei Wuxian, and he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm gonna get him to seal his energy. And he's like, he won't do that. And he's like, He'll do anything. His life is in my hand because he has Wei Wuxian. So obviously, Lan Chan's like, "You can have my sword. I'll seal my shit. Don't touch my man." <laughs> <laughs> it's great because this is when the love confession happens. <laughs> he has got a garroter on his neck. His man is like ten feet away from him, and he's like, "You know what? I can't wait. I have to tell you something." And, <laughs> and Ming Yao's like, "If you have to say something, just say it." Like thinking that Wei Wuxian wouldn't, but he forgets that Wei Wuxian has no fucking shame. And so Wei Wuxian's like, you know what? You're right. And he just looks at him and screams across the courtyard, I wanted to sleep with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I want to sleep with you. And like, <laughs> in his shock, he like, loosens the garage, so Wei Wuxian just like, dives forward into Lan Chan's arms, and Lan Chan's just like, Nani? <laughs> Nani the fuck? Like, he's like, um, my brain broke, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> he's just professing his love, and I love it because at this point they're like, "You need this is not the place." Like, like his older brother's like, "Dude, uh, chill. This is like the worst time for this." And he's like, "I'm sorry, I can wait." And uh, they're like, "All right, let's just move this inside, and y'all chill." <laughs> Go inside. And Weibushin just grabs Lanjan's head and is like, look at me. I love you. I like you. I want to sleep with you. I want to night hunt with I f whatever you. Yeah. <laughs> he runs out of other synonyms for love at that point. Oh, <laughs> so, like everything. Just come right? with me. <laughs> so now, like, to the last chapter, like, the third to last chapter of the book, they they are apparently a couple now. <laughs> well, that that <laughs> But, like, after that comes the other big reveal, which is, um, like, his adopted brother, so the head of the purple people, shows up to save his nephew, not realizing Wei Wuxian is there, but probably suspecting he's there. And yeah. And he ends up getting captured because of the main guy he's fighting tries to attack Wei Wuxian, and he defends him. And they're like, what are you doing? Why are you defending him? Like, I thought you hated him. And he's like, whatever. <laughs> Shut up. I'll break your legs. <laughs> 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 and um, they just have a confrontation because they're like, am I not allowed to hate you? Because it turns out that when they were like, so in the past, in the flashbacks, you find out that the Jiang sect is completely wiped out. The only survivors are Wei Bushin, his uh, adopted brother, and his adopted sister. Everyone else is murdered. They burn it to the ground, the Ooh. bad guys. And like, yeah. they're there. Like, they show up for it. They see the, like, they describe the piles of bodies. It's rough. <laughs> And his brother, who is the, the sect leader now, JC, he runs off, disappears. They don't know what happened, and they find him, and his core has been destroyed. Which means he cannot be a part of the sect. He can't do magic, he can't do anything. He's basically a helpless, regular person. Oh, it's just That's, a city now. <laughs> yeah, so Weibushin tells him that he's going to fix his core using his, like, adopted, like, his blood mother's teacher who was like bashing Sonya and she's like an immortal. Hmm. She, she's basically like one step lower than a god. She cultivated so hard, but it turns out you find out now that he lied to him. Got a doctor from the evil clan who was actually a good person to knock him out and he got his own core cut out and given to his brother. Oh. And like this transfer took three days and he had to be awake for it. No anesthesia or anything. Jeez. <laughs> and that's why Wei Wuxian died. Like, he has his core cut out, but the brother wants him to still fight with him, but he can't do magic. He's weakened. The only thing he can do is use the, the zombie magic he has because Resentful Energy doesn't use a core. Hmm. And because the core is not purifying him anymore, he's, like, turning, but he doesn't really realize it. And he's, like, oh. like he, he ends up, like, drinking heavily, and then he tries to protect the Wen siblings who saved his brother by doing the core transfer. And because he does that, and he's... He's got, he's a necromancer, and there's all that stigma that that's, like, evil, that they end up just turning against him, and they all come at him and kill him. That's how he oh. dies originally. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at this point in the story, in the future, his his brother JC has just found out that he has Wei Bushin's core, and that Wei Bushin gave up everything for him, and he's like, am I supposed to thank you? It's your fault the clan got destroyed, because it kinda is, because Wei Bushin is such a braggart in the past. Oh that he pissed off the wind so much that they killed the Jiang sect. But it probably would have happened anyway. But he still feels at fault, and so does the other brother. And he's like, I'm not allowed to hate you because you did this for me. Mm -hmm. You know? And yeah. Like, That's like, yeah, and like that happens in the book right now. But like I was saying, the Donghua ends. I hate the end of the Donghua because he finds that out after the very end they part bad. But in the book and in the live action show, they end up being like, we're even, dude. Your family raised me and I gave you my core. We're even, you know? A life for a life, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so they kind of end on like a, we don't hate each other, but this is really fucking awkward kind of thing. Yeah. We're and even they, go our separate ways. I don't, right? And like the big bad stand, yeah. they're like, oh, I love all this tea. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> He's like a bag of popcorn. I'm watching couples get together and brothers reunite <laughs> while I'm trying to like take over the world over here. <laughs> but like at this point, um, the corpse that they had been trying to put together shows up completely assembled somehow. Mm. Like, the puppeteer managed to get the pieces together, put it together, and set it on loose, and it's going to go kill the dude that killed it. Or anyone from that sect who has a bloodline. Oh. So it comes running into the temple, winning the ghost generals, like fighting it, trying to make sure it doesn't kill like random people on the street who happen to be have that bloodline. And it ends up like it's great because the main guy is just like, ah, uh, like he's just trying to escape. His little henchman Susi gets killed, and like Niha's son, which is the little brother of the corpse, is trying to kill everybody. 
like he ends up tricking um, Zichen into stabbing the bad guy because he's like, all right, you're disarmed. We got the corpse to quiet down for now. He's like temporarily sealed. Uh, you chill, don't do anything. And he turns back to the guy and the little brother's like, oh, he moved, he's gonna stab you. And he turns around and just stabs the dude. And the dude's like, I didn't do anything. Like that kid just lied to your face. <laughs> And this is when you first suspect, oh, maybe the little brother that's, like, just seems so, like, he, the whole time he's just, like, the lovable idiot that just didn't cultivate right and loves his fans and doesn't know how to use a sword. Maybe he's the mastermind. Uh, yeah. But maybe he's not dumb after all. <laughs> right? But the dude uses the stab, like, he throws his blood on, like, the coffin and unseals the big guy. The big guy comes out and he's like, I'm not afraid of you. And the guy grabs him and just snaps his neck. <laughs> his death is just anticlimactic. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he's like, I'm not as scared of you, crack. <laughs> I guess you should have been. <laughs> at, at this point, though, it's great because you find out that um, uh, the land clan has a weird thing where when they punish people because the uh, writing scriptures didn't work one way with Shen after he died, they started doing a thing where you had to write their scriptures while doing handstands. <laughs> so you do one hand, you're in a one handed handstand, right? So yeah. Lan Chan is just ridiculously strong. And, like, they fight the dude back into the coffin. Baby Wushin, like, writes the blood thing on it, and he's like, this won't hold it. And they knock, like, a statue on it. And Lan Chan's like, I got this. And he pulls the strings off his Gujin, grabs the coffin and the statue, which probably weighs, like, three tons, and just picks them up. Wraps the strings around it and puts it down. And Baby Wushin's like, damn. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh my. Did you do that? <laughs> oh. So, like, yeah, that's, like... And that is how the book pretty much ends. Like, they end up, like, Zichen is utterly sad because now both of his sworn brothers are dead. Finds out one of them killed the other one. Niho Son is, like, super mm. sus. And Lan Chan and Wei Wuxian just end up, like, they get together and they elope. <laughs> <laughs> they end up eloping and they have some, she's done some, like, spicy extra chapters that are basically just, like, porn, kind of. Mm. <laughs> but they run off into the sunset to night hunt together forever. <laughs> happy ending. <laughs> right? It's like a happy ending. But there's so much crazy intrigue and turns and twists in the book. Like, it's it's really good. Yeah. I think so. I, gotta, and I glossed I over, check it out. Yeah, and I've glossed over some stuff. Like, you find out that Weibushin has a fear of dogs, which seems like a weird throwaway thing. But it actually is, like, something that matters in the plot. Like, that's how JC starts to suspect that he actually is Weibushin. But even though the lightning didn't work because he's like, you're afraid of dogs. I'm pretty sure you're him because no one else is stupid enough to be afraid of dogs. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's really it's good. Like, really true, um, <laughs> I know, so much information, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a series good. of books. And I think, like, the first two are out in English. I think the third one will be coming out soon if it hasn't come out. Like, they're pretty much almost done with the English run and, like, both the Dongwa and the the live action are out too so anybody wants to check it out you can do that <laughs> i'll make sure to put visual aids for the characters i talk about so i can like see their face <laughs> probably from like using the dongwa because that's like the best it's probably the best way to do it because the live action might be confusing oh yeah definitely check that out it, oh it sounds pretty cool i like the uh i like the tension and the like the comedy that comes from the, the tension and all it sounds right? like in a lot of these scenes and like, really like <laughs> the romance really doesn't come out till like after the books are done in the extra chapters. Like there's like I think there are two kisses maybe and like weird like charged moments where both of them are just like confused and don't know what's going on. But like really the romance is like a backseat, even though this is technically a romance novel. It's more about like the characters. Because they're all so, like, like I barely touched on most of them. They're all so fleshed out. Like, you kind of care. Like, when you find out about the twist yeah. from the core, you're like, oh, God, like, I tear up every time. Because <laughs> it's so tragic. Because they're all so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to slap them and hug them. It's so tragic. It's all so stupid. <laughs> well, it's stupid because, like, the, the twist at the very end is you find out that J.C., like, his core gets taken, and they all assume that what happened is he was stupid, ran back, and tried to, like, recover his parents' bodies or something? No. Wei Wuxian had left their inn that they were hiding in to get them food. Jian Cheng noticed that there were some bad guys walking around, and they were going to find him, so he ran out as a diversion to save him. Uh -huh. And that's why he lost his core. It's crazy because the whole time they're thinking, like, no, he was selfish. No, he tried to save his older brother, because Wei Wuxian is technically older. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, they're like, at the same time, you're like, oh, these people are making such stupid decisions. But at this point in their lives, their entire clan died. They're 15. 
you know, they're still teenagers. So it's yeah, kind of like, on one hand, you're like, these are really dumb decisions. But on the other hand, you're like, these people are like in the middle of youth and the shit is being thrown on them. And they're in the middle of a war. They don't yeah, know what to do. Kind of what happens. <laughs> yeah. They're kids trying to make the best of the situation. There's going to be some, some bad choices made. Yeah, there's going <laughs> to be some guided. super missteps. Like Lan Chan, yeah. when he realizes feelings for Wang Yang, he keeps trying to bring him back to the land sect to help him. But Wang Yang's like, oh no, you just want to bring me back to discipline me because I'm using resentful energy and I'm a bad person now. And he's like, no, but he, Lan Chan is a quiet, like he doesn't talk. You know how you were like, Lorna G is like a mum's the word kind of person? Lan Chan yeah. literally does not talk and doesn't have like very explicit facial expressions. Hmm. So a lot of- He's kind of a dead tank kind of person. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like, he's <laughs> super quiet. He's almost mute. Like, it's crazy. Like, people are just like, you never know what he's thinking. So he can't communicate to Abish and he's trying to help him. And he, because his face, like, never changes, he thinks that he's, like, just trying to fix him or something. And he doesn't have, because he's also 15, he doesn't have the, like, social or emotional understanding to express himself correctly. Yeah. Like, if any of these people could have... <laughs> Yeah, like, any of these people could, like, express themselves and talk. A lot of that shit might have been avoided, but maybe not. I mean, they're kids. What kind of difference could they really make until they start fucking up and doing crazy shit? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that is Modazushi, or the demonic, uh, the grandmaster. It's either grandmaster or grandfather of demonic cultivation. It's like a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. And we get there. Well, that, like, Mo, Mo Dao Zixi is the Chinese name. The English translation is Grandmaster or Grandfather of Demonic Cultivation. It depends on what you look at, because, like, the unofficial title ended up being the official title, but they changed it slightly, because it was, like, Diabolical Cultivation, and I'm like, that is just, like, a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I felt like being like, you could have just named it uh, the Grandfather of Necromancy, because it's basically what he does, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> that would have covered it all. <laughs> Right, but that is cool. I like it. Yep, that is my addition to the book club. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed our little like run through. I know it was probably a little more long winded than Christopher's because I was trying to like shove a summary of three whole books in there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so yeah, yeah, like, subscribe, and check us out again. Next episode will probably be Christopher's episode of his. Um, to remind you guys, he did the Lorna D episode last time, and he finished the book. Remind me the name. The Rising Storm, right? Yeah, The Rising Storm. Yeah, so you probably want to finish off talking about the end of that book, because I know some stuff happens, and then... And I've I got a little bit wanted... of corrections. Yeah, a few so. corrections, and then, like, we wanted to talk about the Romeo and Juliet books, eventually, because those are really good, and I know that, like, you wanted to, to gush about those, because those are good. That's, like, a yeah, really, really yeah, good love story. Yeah, the Lost Stars are so good. <laughs> I really look, really enjoyed that book. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to audio book that one again beforehand. That way I get I get a, a good uh, overview of it. Oh, yeah, when I get sure. to talk about it. Alright, well you guys like, subscribe and check us out. Ring that bell and we'll see you guys later. Laters. <laughs>